In the period after the Russian revolutions, which is commonly known as the Russian Civil War, many nationalities, ethnic groups with all kinds of political affiliations asserted themselves and proclaimed their own states. Did you know that there was also a Ukrainian state established in the Russian Far East? It was known as Green Ukraine. How this state emerged and how did it come to an end is what you will learn in this very interesting episode about the forgotten Ukrainian Republic in the Russian Far East, Green Ukraine. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, my name is Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history for you. And if you find it interesting, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. In a previous video, I explained how in the year of 1918, four different Ukrainian states existed. The year 1917 was the starting sign for many nationalities and ethnic groups to secede from the bygone Russian Empire. Let's take a look at what happened in Ukraine first. Inaugurated on the 7th of November 1917, the Ukrainian National Republic, the UNR, also known as the Ukrainian People's Republic, the UPR, distanced itself from the Bolshevik government that had taken power in Petrograd and Moscow. Complete independence was asserted on the 12th of January. Now, the Bolsheviks, they entered peace talks with the Central Powers because they inherited a state that was still in war and these talks were held at Brest-Litovsk. When these talks deadlocked in January 1918, the Ukrainians signed a separate peace deal with the Germans, which was known as the Bread Peace, in which Ukraine agreed to supply Germany and Austria-Hungary with a million tons of bread annually in exchange for their recognition of the Ukrainian People's Republic, UNR, that had recently declared its independence from Russia. Meanwhile, a rival government was set up by Ukrainian Bolsheviks in the city of Kharkiv, initially known as the Ukrainian People's Republic of Soviets, do notice that around this time several short-lived Soviet republics throughout Ukraine sprung up, such in the regions of Odessa, Crimea and Donetsk. However, the Bolsheviks managed to seize power in Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital, shortly after. The Bolsheviks also had brokered a peace deal with the Germans. The peace treaty of Brest-Litovsk was signed and as a result, the entirety of Ukraine and more came in the hands of the central powers. The Germans reinstated the UNR, but relations soured and the Germans installed a new government towards the end of April 1918, with Russian-speaking former Tsarist officer Pavlo Skoropatsky as hetman of Ukraine. Flash forward to the 11th of November 1918, the First World War came to an end. And also, the conditions of the peace treaty of Brest-Litovsk were annulled, and thus, the German occupation of Ukraine ended. On the 22nd of January 1919, Ukrainian independence was proclaimed again. However, it was not to last because the Bolsheviks were on their way. Now, how all this went down is what I covered in depth in my video about why Ukraine did not achieve independence after the First World War. See the end card for that. In November 1918, the West Ukrainian People's Republic was also established. It controlled most of Eastern Galicia that previously was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire that had crumbled by now. Eventually, this state was overthrown by Poland and we should not forget the free territory that was led by Nestor Makhno. Not really a state because the anarcho-libertarians were against this. The anarchists allied themselves with the Reds to defeat the Whites, which they did. After this, they were annihilated when the Reds turned on them. Nestor Magno got away to Romania. But there was another Ukrainian state that sprung up in the Russian Far East, which was known as Green Ukraine, or the Green Wedge, Zelini Klin, or New Ukraine. Now, normally I cover these short-lived states on location, but I guess I won't get here anytime soon. So you have to do with some footage that I recorded from the train when I traveled through the region in the summer of 2019. Oh, these peaceful times. The first question that comes to mind is why did Ukrainians live in the Russian Far East? Mid 19th century, the Russians extended their territory in the East in the Treaty of Aigun of 1858 
and the Convention of Peking, 1860. During this period, a small number of Ukrainian settlers moved through the region. Later in the 1880s, the Russian Tsar announced free transportation and free land for Ukrainian settlers that were willing to settle in the Russian Far East. Near the end of that century, many Ukrainians would inhabit the region known as the territory between the Amur River and the Pacific Ocean in Russia's maritime province. Russia's 1897 census counted 22.4 million Ukrainian speakers inside the Russian Empire, of which 1.2 million lived outside what was then considered Ukraine. Of these, just over a million lived in the European part of the empire, with more than 200,000 in the Asian part. Efforts to establish Ukrainian autonomy in this region were made in 1917, in June to be precisely, which therefore occurred several months after the February Revolution had taken place. When the first all-Ukrainian Far Eastern Congress came together in Nikolsk, Usorysk, about 100 kilometers away from Vladivostok, to form a Far Eastern Krai Rada. In January 1918, the second all-Ukrainian Far Eastern Conference at Khabarovsk proclaimed the union with the region of the Ukrainian National Republic. For some reasons, the union did not hold. I didn't read exactly why, but I could come up with something. Perhaps the fact that it's well over 9,000 kilometers away from Kyiv. Then in April 1918, the third All-Ukrainian Far Eastern Congress strived for the creation of an independent Ukrainian state and wanted to create an army. This was all hindered by White Admiral Alexander Kolchak, who had seized power in Omsk and declared his dictatorship. Separatism was outlawed. But when his forces collapsed after their failed push on Moscow, and the disastrous Siberian Ice March, efforts were redoubled. It was not to be as the pro-Bolshevik Far Eastern Republic, the FAR, was established with its HQ in Shita. And this republic laid claim on the lands of Green Ukraine. Now, Green Ukraine would exist more or less some two more years as it was disbanded in 1922 when the troops of the FAR marched into the region. The Far Eastern Republic, the FAR, was intended to act as a buffer between the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic, the RSFSR, which firmly recognized the FAR on the 14th of May 1920, and the Japanese interventionist forces that were still present in large numbers in the region. This maneuver proved successful when the Japanese recognized the FAR and signed a peace treaty with it on the 15th of July 1920, the Gongota Agreement. I find these two proposed flags of green Ukraine. As for its political leaders, Yuri Rushko, nicknamed Mova, was the head of the Congress. I read he was sentenced to imprisonment by the Bolsheviks and would later, in the Second World War, perished because of starvation in Kyiv. Green Ukraine's army commander was Boris Kreshetitsky. He was a general in the Russian Imperial Army and served in the Far East. In the summer of 1918, he began forming a Ukrainian army in the Far East. However, he later joined Kolchak and his advance towards Moscow and later served under the White Ottoman Grigory Semyonov. He would migrate to Manchuria to escape the Reds. After several years, he moved to France and joined the French Foreign Legion. And after the German takeover of France in 1940, he moved to Tunis where he passed away. Now, not much is written about green Ukraine in English literature. In the works of different historians that wrote about the Russian Revolution and its aftermath, only Jonathan Smalley wrote about it. So if you have any additional information about green Ukraine, feel free to share this in the comments. Now, green Ukraine was not the only territory inside the Russian Empire where Ukrainians were living. There were other regions as well. Raspberry Ukraine, here a short-lived Kuban People's Republic saw the light of day, it would be absorbed into the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic. Yellow Ukraine, that saw no significant independent political force after 1917. And Grey Ukraine, where there was no successful attempt to create a Ukrainian autonomous region. If you want the details about the four Ukrainian states that existed in 1918, you can click right here. And if you want to know why Ukraine did not achieve independence after the First World War, click right here. Thanks for watching. See you later.